Good evening and welcome to the Reformation Charlotte podcast. This is July 23rd, 2021. Today we're going to be going over a podcast by the infamous Jen Hatmaker. Uh, Jen Hatmaker recently had a person on her podcast named Stephanie Byers. This person is a biological male. Um, and this person came on to the podcast to discuss with Hatmaker issues surrounding transgenderism. Okay, so what I want to do is, is play some of this clip and we'll go through it piece by piece and um, we'll see what uh, what scripture has to say about this. And um, before we get started, if you'll, if you'll uh, subscribe to my channel, it'd be greatly appreciated I'm trying to get this channel going and hopefully we'll be doing more of this as time progresses, depending on the interest. All right, so here we go. Welcome to the For the Love podcast with me, Jen Hatmaker. You guys, the Transitions series has brought us so many amazing guests and stories. I'm just but Okay, so she's doing a series on what she's calling transitions. Now, these are not all related to transgenderism. Um, for example, she's done some on transitioning from certain types of jobs into a different career or whatever. But this particular podcast is part of her transition series where she's bringing on a transgender person to talk about transitioning from one gender to the other. And today, whoa, certainly no exception. This week, we will take a deep dive into what it's like to go through immense personal and even physical change and how that inter... And by the way, that deep dive has... It's not a deep dive into scripture, by the way. It's, it's a deep dive into something completely foreign to scripture. Now, keep in mind, Jen Hatmaker is a professing Christian. Um, she did come out in support of homosexuality a few years ago. You can read about that at ReformationCharlotte.org. Um, she is very open to Christians living a homosexual lifestyle, professing Christians, I should say. And uh, be it as it may, her very own daughter within the last year or so also came out as a lesbian. So you, you, when, if, when you put two and two together and you start seeing these people who are professing Christians start sliding off and veering off into this more tolerant and accepting stance towards sexual immorality, the first thing you always want, want to try to recognize is, is there somebody close to this person who has recently come out? gay. And I can guarantee you that 99% of the time, the answer to that question is yes. Internal and external change can then radiate into our communities and change the world for the better. Because we will learn how to become more accepting, more inclusive and progressive with Kansas State representative. Because that's how God is, accepting and inclusive of unrepentant sinners. Hey everybody, Jen Hatmaker here. Welcome to the For the Love podcast. A big one today, guys. We're in a series right now called For the Love of Transitions. We just kind of felt like as a team, collectively, we are all working through transitions right now. A lot of us have transitioned inside of our work, our relationships. This is just a ubiquitous space that we are all in, whether we are transitioning through something that we chose or didn't choose. Either way, a bunch of us are in this kind of in-between. We're from this to this. We're moving from here to here. And some of those transitions are chosen. We make a decision that I am not going to live in this place anymore, but here in whatever way we choose, but it could be there are those of you listening for whom accepting truthfully. Like okay. She's talking about choosing your transition here, and then she's going to compare choosing to transition from a job to another career versus not being able to choose to transition from one gender to the other because you're born a certain way. The scriptures are clear. 
God was clear. God made male and female. Unless you take the position that God makes mistakes, you don't transition from a male into a female or vice versa. You choose to rebel against God by pretending to transition from one gender to the other. Part of who you are so that you can live authentically is a part of your transition. Embracing the way you were formed, the way you are wired, the way that you flourish. The way we're wired, according to scripture, is in a state of rebellion against God. This is called original sin. We are all born in a state of rebellion against God. Now, some people are born with a proclivity towards sexual immorality, homosexuality. Some people are born with a proclivity towards other sins. Yes, in a sense, we are wired that way. We are born in a natural state to sin. But what the gospel does is it frees us from that natural state, from that wired state of sin, gives us the freedom to be able to obey God. Who you are deeply in your soul. So in order to walk on this earth as you were really meant to do, that is harder than it sounds because we have been handed a narrative across many spectrums between gender and sexuality and work environments and glass ceilings and expectations and religious constraints and geographical norms. I mean, religious constraints, meaning God's moral character, God's nature, his law that he has set forth for people to obey. You pick it, and we've been handed a way to be, depending on what body you were born in, where you were. You were born in the body that God designed and gave you to be born in. We're born, all of it. And so it is actually way harder than it sounds to live 100% truthfully in our own lives in this world. And so I know this, I've done this work. I, you know, if you've been around me at all, I have absolutely chosen authenticity, whatever the cost may be. And then don't throw me a parade. I lived for years not choosing that because I was afraid to lose all that I knew I was going to lose in order to embrace my actual convictions, my beliefs, my values, who I like actually really am. Okay. So prior to her coming out, prior to Jen Hatmaker coming out in favor of homosexuality, if, if my memory serves me right, the Southern Baptist Convention's bookstore chain, Lifeway, used to sell her books. Um, and when she came out in favor of homosexuality, her, her books were pulled from the shelves. All right, so this is what she's talking about. She, she sold her books on the shelves of Southern Baptist bookstores. Okay, so when she came out and embraced her values, her anti-Christian, anti-God, anti-morality values, she lost her ability to sell her books in Lifeway. And as bad as Lifeway is, they were right to make that call. Uh, Lifeway sells a lot of heresy, by the way. And, you know, I, I don't recommend walking into Lifeway without your discernment lenses on it and buying anything. Nonetheless... This is what she's referring to. Um, basically, her loss was a much bigger gain of the world, which is what she desired. She she basically sold her soul to gain the world. And this is basically what she's going to proclaim throughout this podcast is, you know, she was worried about giving up her soul. But now she's got the world and she's loving it and she's embracing it. She's living it up. And this is, you know, now she's got all this wonderful stuff. Um, but the state of the state of the sad woman's soul is, you know, and and, and sadly, the person that she ha has on this podcast that she's fixing to deceive further in, in, into lostness, she's it's. It, it's really sad. It's really sad to watch what happens to people. Not who my subculture wanted me to be, expected me to be. So I know about this. I know about the cost. 
I know about the fear, but I'll tell you what I also know. I know about the freedom now. The freedom. The freedom is worth it all. The, the freedom. freedom of authenticity, the freedom of being one version of yourself all the time. The real one where you're not having to pit different versions of yourself depending on who you're talking to. You cannot put a price on it. You cannot. In my estimation, it's the only way to live. Our guest today, we're lucky, man. She knows what it's like to choose authenticity, whatever the cost, so that she lives her most meaningful life of possibility. And see, here's the thing. When you love the world and you walk away from any kind of what she calls religious constraints, when you love the world and then you walk away from those religious constraints, the world loves you. You have gained the whole world when you do that. I am honored today to welcome Stephanie Byers to the show, Kansas State Representative, and the first openly trans person to be a part of the Kansas legislature. Very big deal. You've obviously seen her in the news. Big deal. Her journey inspired an untold amount of people, and it all started for her. It really is a big deal because... Um, God, God is clearly judging this nation right now. And you, when you look at Romans 1, Romans 1 says that when he judges a nation, the first thing he does is give them up to sexual immorality. Like sexual immorality, especially homosexuality and, and various types of perversions like this, is not only, according to Romans 1, is not only the sin by which God is judging, but it's also the judgment itself that he's given you up to. Um, and, and the fascinating thing is, is that the people who embrace this lifestyle and this worldview do not realize, at least on the surface, they do not realize that this is the judgment of God being poured out on them. It is the deception of their own mind and heart that they are so caught up in and so blinded to um, uh, Romans uh, 118, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Um, they, they are so caught up in their sin that they don't realize that they are under God's judgment. They, suppressed it they live and indulge in this lifestyle and they're going to wake up barring mercy from god revealing himself revealing his son who died on the cross to bear uh, the sins of the world so that who would believe in him would repent and uh turn to him and trust in him and 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 be saved but uh they're they're gonna wake up one day in hell and they're not going to be able to suppress the truth anymore. I mean, it's, it's going to be right there in front of them and they will not be able to escape it. For knowing who she actually was, Stephanie was elected in November of 2020. Okay. So she's kind of fresh. She, 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 she biological male Kansas state educator of the year and the Glisten national educator of the year. She was a career educator and you think she'll talk about that. And so she retired after 29 years of teaching for the Wichita public schools, where she was the award winning director of bands and orchestras at Wichita North high school. She's an Oklahoman by birth, a member of the Chickasaw nation, and she's lived in Wichita for three decades. So that is her adult home. And 
She has worked tirelessly to create and operate community groups that are based in inclusivity and dignity and rights and understanding of diverse communities. I mean. Okay, see, this is a further example of Romans 1. And this is uh, Romans 1, 22. It, it says that these people who, who claim to be wise, they're actually fools. And they exchange the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up to the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. Okay, so, so, Jen Hatmaker is given this 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 great big philosophical reason for for why this is such a wonderful thing and and how it, it, it's such a, a, a wise and good thing to embrace it really what she's doing is foolish it, it's foolish she's really impressive so buckle up she talks in this interview about everything her personal transition which interestingly she says really wasn't her transition at all that was just simply her finally telling the truth it's everybody else right <laughs> that has to transition around her what she's learned what she's leading toward it's a powerful conversation. She's a powerful person and I'm really proud of her and I'm proud to know her and I'm proud to meet her. And these are the pioneers in our world that we'll just be talking about for a really long time. The firsts, right? The ones who went first, first of their kind, first in their office, first in their state. I'm going to try to get through, through so the majority of this to today. before You're I have to cut it off. I'm going to try to keep this under Whatever an hour. Your experience with the trans community, I'm glad you're here today. You will learn something today. You will just listen and learn today. Listen and learn. Listen, listen to and learn. Claiming to be wise. She brings so much to the table here around numerous. She's wise in her own eyes. In the world. And so proud of her. Excited to know her. Can't wait to meet her in person. You're going to love her now. So I'm so pleased to share my conversation with the wise and smart and courageous. Wise and Beth smart Myers. and courageous. She's a fool. They're fools. Stephanie, welcome to the For the Love podcast. I'm just really honored and pleased to have you here and to have you on the show and to meet you. I've just respected and admire you for some time. Thank you. Your work is very near and dear to me. It's so wonderful to watch from afar. I'm now in Texas, so I don't know what that says about me, but obviously I have filled my listeners in a little bit about you already and kind of your story arc and, and who you are. But I wonder if we kind of, before we really kind of get into some of my questions for you, if you could just tell my listening community a little bit more about who you are and where you came from and, and kind of the, the plot points along the way to get to where you are today. Well, let's start with the fact that I'm 58 years old. So that means that I was a kid in the 60s, an adolescent in the 70s, an adult in the 80s, and I became a parent in the 90s. Originally, I'm from Oklahoma. My family had been there before statehood, which is easy to say when you're Native American, but been there for a long time. I'm the oldest okay, of I'm gonna my kid. I'm going to try to skip ahead here a little bit to get, get to the meat of this. Which is the largest or second largest defense from which we get a public high school in the state of Kansas. And I did that until I retired in 2019. And so been a, a, a long, as I say, strange trip, but you know, here I am. You know, I did all these things and established myself as who people thought that I was, as a, as a quality musician, as a quality teacher, as a member of the community, as a strong parent, and did all this carrying the secret about my gender until I was 51. Wow. And in 2014, I began living my life authentically. Mm, God, a million questions. Okay, so it, instead of, again, Jen Hatmaker is a professing Christian. Professing. She's not a true Christian, but she is a professing Christian. She claims to believe the Bible, but she only believes what she wants to believe out of it. Okay, so instead of correcting this guy who is deathly confused, dangerously confused like seriously in danger of eternal damnation 
she's going to sit here and affirm this guy and further his confusion. This is, by the way, the most unloving thing you can do is to lie to somebody to send them to hell. That must have been really lonely for you for a long time to care. I mean, to know in kindergarten and go all the way to 51. And, and by the way, she's doing the same thing that um, uh, J.D. Greer does and um, Rosaria Butterfield and, uh, and a lot of these wishy-washy Southern Baptist evangelical types are – now gravitating towards this this movement of of what they call pronoun hospitality, and uh, now let's be clear: Jen Hatmaker fully believes that this man is a woman. She does. That's that's how confused she is too. But you even have these evangelical leaders that embrace this pronoun hospitality, who who say that even though you don't really believe that they're a woman or that they're a man or, you know, that they're transgender, you call them by their preferred pronouns anyway as a way of being hospitable and loving towards it. But that's that's really very unloving to further their confusion like that rather than offer biblical correction and rebuke if you're, if you're a true Christian, which, again, Jen Hatmaker is not. I can only imagine the, the just the burden of loneliness inside of that. How did you begin to find the courage to transition and be who you authentically always were? You know, at 51, you've got a real established life. You've got real established relationships. You have established yourself as a certain person in the world. I just, the amount of courage that that must have taken is hard to kind of fathom. Was that a long runway for you? Or once you made that choice, did that shrink up, that timeline shrink up for you? I think there are things that, that we need to kind of maybe bring up as we get into this discussion. The first thing I want to say is that, you know, as a person who is transgender, I speak for myself. I don't speak for the whole community. Yeah, thanks for saying Because our lives are all very different, and there may be commonalities between us, but, you know, just to, to understand that this is my story, and I'm just a story for everyone. Totally. But one of the things about it is that that existence of keeping who you are authentically hidden, buried behind while you're trying to exist in the outside creates kind of like this wall in, in, inside your, your soul so that who you are is behind the wall and on the outside of the wall is this avatar that has elements of who you are and they interact with the community and, and that's, that's what everybody sees. It's kind of like your ambassador. You can only be that way, at least for me, for so long before you begin to go, I can't do this anymore. I ended up feeling broken. You know, most of the time, desperately doing everything I could. On okay. Okay. So you, know, you got to feel sorry in a way for these people because they're definitely hurting. And, you know, we don't want to write that off. They're, they're definitely hurting. They're confused. They're suffering from this, this, uh, and, and I say this carefully they are suffering from this disorder, but it is a disordered state of sin. It is not an ailment like a type of sickness. It is, it, it, this is rooted in sin. It is rooted in rebellion against God. It is not the same thing as having anxiety or, you know, a, a some kind of mental disorder that, that, you know, is that there's a, an actual physical reason behind. This is a person who is deeply spiritually dead and looking for something to fulfill his life. And instead of finding that in Christ, they're naming all of these other ways about how they can sidestep Christ and continue to rebel against Christ and embrace this filthy 
lifestyle. The outside that wall to not appear to be broken, to be, you know, everything that I needed to be for everybody around me, but lacking that connection. And that sense of brokenness takes its toll. It creates this emotional exhaustion. Emotional exhaustion. It does. And, you know, emotional exhaustion that begins to lead towards depression and and depression tends to lead, you know, oftentimes towards suicide. And at those rest and, and sadly he's right, that does happen quite a bit. But the statistics actually show that people who do this transition from one gender to another does not decrease the like likelihood of that person committing suicide. In, in fact, in many ways, it actually increases it. Um, it's really sad that this person has dealt with this his entire life, this depression and this emotional trauma, but there hasn't been anybody out there that, I, that I'm aware of, that I know of, who has actually explained to this person that, you know, you're not going to be able to fulfill your life by continuing to rebel against God, what you need to do is repent and trust in the saving blood of Jesus Christ. It's the only way. And I wrestled for a very, very long time with these things. A friend told me, who was also transgender, that you begin to realize you're going to die. And if you're going to die, this slow, painful death of the soul, as she put it, where that person behind the wall, that authentic person begins to just decay while the avatar lives on and you lose that connection with who you really are. And that's a very painful process. Or you may choose to take the quicker route and take your own life. Gosh. Or there's the third choice. And the third choice is to begin to live authentically and to move into that interaction. You know, and we call that transition. But honestly, for a trans person, they're just bringing who they are out. It's not really a transition. It's just telling everybody. Truth. Right, but everybody else around you is going through transitions. They begin to learn somebody new. They begin to interact with somebody with a different thing. And that point where you reach that decision to choose as to which way you're going to, you know, finish the rest of your life. And we all know we're going to die at some point in time. But when you begin to live authentically, you're living oftentimes with joy. You're living with the truth. You're living with realities of who you are and getting to know everybody in a new context. And so for me, that point started well before my 51st birthday. But it was a tough choice to make because there's so many factors involved. And, and some of them beyond control. The emotional exhaustion kept keeping up. And I kept trying to put it off because I kept thinking, I'll retire. I don't want to do anything to mess up my retirement because then what happens? Trans people oftentimes have a hard time finding work. You know, and I had a job and he's like, you know, at the time I'm doing this too, just before I made this, this leap in the mouth. By the way, that's because it's weird. And, you know, we're living in a time in this world that this type of display of sexual depravity is becoming more and more common and accepted. But that's really among the younger crowd, mostly, and, and the le leftists and the liberals and, you know, the types of people who don't own small businesses and, and the types of people who, who, who are, are not af offended so much by that. Because in reality, even though people say that they're tolerant and, and, and okay with this and they want to celebrate it and, and be more open to it, the reality is, is the vast majority of people know that it's weird. And they know that bringing on a man who's dressed up like a woman wearing makeup and, and pressed on nails and, and a stuffed bra or, or whatever and, and have grown out their hair and like that, this looks bad on their business and it will drive customers away. 
in the real world. Um, as a matter of fact, um, I was in uh, uh, a great clips not too long ago where I um, wanted to get my hair cut and there was a normal looking person there standing there to, re to, to check me in. And, you know, I'm, I, I go to sit down and then out comes this this uh, drag queen who walked over to me and <laughs> wearing bright pink and, and, and fingernails about that long and, and painted up and dressed like a woman and prancing around and came up and said, how are you doing today? I'm going to cut your hair. And I was like, no, you're not. We'll get her to do it. So, you know, most people in their right mind know that that kind of thing hurts business. So that's why it's hard for transgender people to to find work. Authenticity. The governor of Kansas at the time and our, our legislature did away with due process for educators. And Harry was a career educator. And I thought, now what am I going to do? Wow, I didn't you know, know they that. fired me for mm -hmm. this. Yeah, that happened in 2012. And so it's like, they can fire me for this. The school district put their own spin on things. They put it into their contract with all teachers that they would provide due process. So I was grateful for that. You know, the Obama administration was in charge. They were writing guidances on how to deal with transgender students. And a lot of it didn't say anything about trans adults. So it was doing some investigation with the district to find out what they would do. There was no specific policy in place. Sure. You know, it, it, it wasn't that it was something new. But it was something that. All right. So, so basically, what's going on here is is you know I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up because it, it doesn't really get into anything, any any deeper than that. I mean, it's just chit chat all the way through it. But the bottom line here is, Jen Hatmaker is leading this poor person straight into hell, and she does it every time she has somebody on her podcast. She leads people to hell. And sadly, you know, hopefully some point before this person dies, he'll hear the gospel. Somebody will give him the true gospel and he will be able to find the true hope that's found only in the saving blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. Um, so you know, with that, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and, uh, um, end it with the gospel. The gospel is that we are wicked. We're born wicked. We're born in a state of rebellion against God. We were put here to glorify God, but we couldn't. And because we couldn't, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come down to earth to live the perfect life that we could not live. He fulfilled the law, the moral law of God. And he took our place on the cross. We should have been up on that cross, but instead he stood in our place. He bore the wrath of God that we should have received. He died. And three days later, he was rose again from the dead, defeating death, defeating sin. And now he sits at the right hand of God forever, making intercession for the saints. So that for those who will repent of their sin and trust in the saving grace of Jesus Christ, can no longer be enslaved to that sinful lifestyle. There is no, no more lost hope. There is hope in Christ, and you will not have to bear the wrath of God. That is a grateful thing that we praise God for, and everybody should be on their knees pleading with God for forgiveness and begging him to save them. And it's just so amazing that, that people don't because it's, it's just such a wonderful thing. But anyway, I, I just, I want to end with that. I always want to end with the gospel. Um, and like I said, if, if you don't mind, go ahead and uh, subscribe to my channel. I'm, I hope to be doing a lot more of this and getting better at it. And I appreciate your patience as we get moving. And um, you know, I, I may not sound perfect, but I'm going to start doing the best I can and hopefully getting better over time. So thanks again. Have a good evening. Bye.